I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite lore cast on the Citadel. Welcome to the Mass Effect Lorecast, the podcast where we explore the vast universe of lore behind the Mass Effect games. We'll talk about all the details you may have missed, ask the hard questions, and more. Commander Shepherds, welcome back to the Mass Effect Lorecast. This is your host, Tom or Robots. I'm here with Sam and Seven the Legend. Sam, excuse me, I just I think I just burped up some uh, flavored water. It's very orange. It's actually mm. vanilla tangerine, but it looks very orange on the screen right now. Fancy. Yeah. So, sorry about that. Uh, that burpage, <laughs> but I'm going to keep that in there because burps are healthy. If you're not getting Total that gas move. out of your system, then man, you're having problems. How are you doing, Sam? I'm good. Um, I don't have any reflux right now, so <laughs> I'm fantastic. Uh, but I do get reflux a lot, and I feel like it's happening more and more frequently as I get older. You're getting old. Uh, You're getting old. Yeah. It's for me. It was like too much, like sweets. Like mm. sweets gives me kind of that stomach thing. Like for some reason, it doesn't sit well. For me, I think it's dairy. Is it? And, well, uh, that's that's and, different. And deep fried deep yeah. fried foods fried will definitely do it dairy sounds like you're lactose intolerant i'm lactose intolerant i lactose intolerance yeah there you go well hey welcome <laughs> back everybody uh we teased it on the last episode we're talking about romancing hackett today <laughs> yeah i know yeah we, i mean we normally don't give characters more than two episodes but it seems like this is a special occasion um so did you say you heard something about there being signs of a cut hackered Hackett, Hackard, Hackett, Hackett, Shepard, Hackard. Yeah, I just, I just yeah. joined them together. A Hackett, Shepard, uh, romance. Okay, so going from talking about how Hackett could be Shepard's dad to this has got to be the worst secretary in the history of video game podcasting. Uh huh. Yeah, <laughs> um, because we're, we're we're treading some really weird boundaries here. Yeah, yeah. Last last episode was is Shepard or is Hackett Shepard's dad? Now we're like is, is Hackett Shepard's secret lover? Well, um, is Hackett Shepard's daddy? Uh, oh no! Yeah, that's kind of <laughs> where we went, huh? That is that is exactly where we went, and oh, I don't like it. So oh, we're gonna no. we're gonna but we're gonna get through this. Um, basically, it was brought to my attention recently by a listener of this show that they think. There's some unwritten, unsaid sexual tension between the commander and the admiral. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, they they think there's some flirtation going on uh, between Fim Shep and Hackett. And uh, I wanted to cover this because it was interesting enough to me <laughs> that I don't I don't think it's going to be covered anywhere else. Like, I, don't I don't think, think it will be. I think you're right any other mass effect content creator or even you know the two girls one ship podcast on video game romances mm -hmm. i mean they, they tend to cover romances that are established right they're like actually in the games for sure not a individual's perspective on what flirting might or might not look like which is vague to be sure because some people just don't read that stuff at all some people are not very good at sending signs you know like there's a lot of subjectivity to that. Absolutely. Right. Right. Um, so there's basically, yeah, it's, 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 it's very subjective. And, and here's what part of the message that was sent to me said, uh, Hackett's facial gestures, looks, and eyes are actually much different than when he chats with male ship. So when, when Hackett chats mm -hmm. with Fim ship, the gestures, the way that Hackett's looking at Fimship and his eyes are different. I'm on my first Fimship playthrough right now. Uh -huh. I'm in Mass Effect 2, so I haven't, you know, had conversations face to face with Hackett yet. Right. Um, so and, I don't know about this one. Okay, I can't and, verify it. Yeah, so I'm 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 trying to think through this because most of the time I, I will play a female ship. I rarely play the male ship. I, I prefer the voice acting. Um, and oftentimes I just like being a female character. We've talked about this before where I get to be somebody very different than myself. And I, I like that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't think that that was something I was looking to see if existed. Like, I would assume from a programming standpoint, you're not going to put that in there unless it's intentional because it takes a lot of extra work. And so the default would be to just make the make hack it in each of those scenes the same and just change out the lead character which whichever shepherd you have right 
Yes. Yeah. But I can't speak on that. Right. Because I haven't seen those scenes with Fim Shep yet. So yeah. I don't know whether or not this is actually different Yeah, or whether it's wishful thinking. I also don't know that I would have noticed, like I, I've seen them, but I don't know that I, I like without thinking to look, I wouldn't have just noticed. I don't think. Right. And, and, you know, I'm going to be honest at first, this entire thought made me kind of recoil. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> because I've never considered it. Uh-huh. And, you know, he's my boss kind of, and he's like old. <laughs> yeah. No, like we mentioned this on the last episode. Like he's not the first person in the game, whether I'm playing as male Shep or fe- female Shep that I think of as like, Oh, look at that hottie. Hope maybe what are they doing tonight? You know, maybe we can get together. Like, yeah, I've never put Hackett in that kind of position. Right. But then, you know, like I also think, this is an RPG, right? It's a role-playing game. So you are a shepherd. And as I've found out since we started this show, there are fans and listeners of this show and fans of the games who are all different ages and all, you know, all shapes, sizes, ages, you name it. Preferences Um, of all sorts of preferences. Humans are very Um, diverse. Right. And so I think if there's someone who's like, you know, older, maybe, and more similar in age to Hackett, it makes sense why you'd be attracted to Hackett. Oh, sure. Oh, totally. Um, I mean, he's a very take charge kind of guy, especially if you're the kind of person who's more drawn towards personalities than looks, which we tend to all be once we get to know people more. So if you feel very familiar with him because you played the game a lot, you might actually feel more of that over time. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe it's a head cannon that kind of grows on someone. I'm not sure. Um, but then I also realized, you know, like we discussed before, Hackett isn't that old. Hackett's not as old as you would think Hackett is. He's only a few years older than Anderson. He's like 52 yeah. by Mass Effect 3. And and by Mass Effect 3, Shepard's about 32. Right. Absolutely. P- Parent-child difference in age, potentially, like we mentioned yeah. on the last episode. But uh, yeah. yeah, 20 year difference. Yeah. Yeah. So is this 52 to 32, 20 year difference is huge. If you're like 32 to 12, Mm -hmm. also illegal Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. definitely frowned upon and should be. Um, but, (laughs) but, 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 you know, by the time you get to like 52, 32, this kind of relationship while, while abnormal does happen. Oh, it's, it's totally possible by that point. As you get older, there's less of a difference in th- how much age plays a role in, in your life experience. Um, right. It's something I've like, my wife is like seven years younger than I am. Um, and when we were dating, like, and, and, and she was like in her early twenties and I was in my late twenties, that felt like a much bigger difference than it does now, which is like, mm. you know, a decade later, um, it, that, it, that difference shrinks over time. Yeah. The majority, the maturity gap narrows. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but still, even still 20 years would be enough of a difference that it would be frowned upon. Probably. I don't know though, because this is in the future too. Right. So the life expectancy is in like the one fifties, right. For humanity, something like that. They say that, you know, human humanity is lucky to get to one fifty. So it's much older, even yeah. though Hackett looks like he's, <laughs> like he's, he's way, like way older than 52. Yeah. yeah. Even by our standards. Um, he's been through some stuff, man. Yeah. He's, he's gone through the dirt <laughs> and gotten all muddy like a Chevy. Um, and <laughs> like <a rock. laughs> um, but you know, maybe this is, maybe this is more normal in the future when, when human lifespans are 50% longer, what's 20 year difference. That's true. That could be different. That, you know, that could be a thing as well. Um, it's all, it's not that this is any justification is that age difference was much more common in the past as well. Yeah, that's true. Um, but again, that's, it's not a deal breaker. The, the difference between a 52 and a 32 year old being in a relationship like that, especially if there's you know, something legitimately there. I mean, there's, there's nothing about that that says like, Oh, come on. That's unrealistic. You know? Right. Well, the only thing that would be unrealistic is the military aspect, you know, right. right. With Hackett being the top of the Alliance Navy. Right. Right. But not a personal unrealistic. It's just a situational unrealistic (sighs) kind of thing. Yeah. 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 I mean, it would still be like, I mean, 
I just want to back this up again and say that I still don't like <laughs> it up. I personally have not seen any evidence in the games that would indicate that Shepard was getting hit on or Shepard was hitting on uh, Hackett. But I've the interesting thing about age, though, I've heard more than a few people say that they romance Dr. Chakwas, if possible. OK, which is interesting. She's also graying. You know, she's got the dignified gray look. How old is she? I got to look this up. While we're I talking. looked it up. I, I'll okay. save you the trip. Yeah. We don't know. Oh, no. We don't, we don't know how old she is. But given her experience, yeah. she's probably similar in age to Hackett and Anderson. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. Because just because of the tours of duty that she's been on when she started serving, she's probably similar in age. Yeah. And she's also reached the rank of major. Um, yeah, graying hair, but that doesn't mean anything. Some people gray in their thirties, you know, like right, you don't really right. know. Um, other She's than got the that, attractive. She looks good for her age, whatever that age is. Like, yeah, <laughs> she's got the attractive older lady uh, aspect, like Helen Mirren, you know. Yeah, um, totally. Uh, and uh, or you know, you know who I can't remember the actor's name uh, right now, but did you ever watch Sex Education on Netflix? No, no, I haven't watched. Okay, this, no. well. Uh, maybe our listeners will know, but the mom, the mom in, in sex education mm-hmm. uh, kind of reminds me of Chuck was at any rate, I've heard more than a few people mention that they would romance um, Gillian Anderson. That they would. Okay. That yeah. They would, that they would romance Dr. Chuck was if given the opportunity. Yeah. I mean, MILF is a thing for a reason, right? But why is this okay? Like <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've never heard anyone of wanting to romance Anderson or Hackett. So, and, and, and I think that there's a visceral reaction from the community, everyone that I've spoken with, it seems like, um, I think, okay. I think you make a good point there. They are both like commanding officers and that automatically puts up a certain wall where I think most people would look at that and go, that's a barrier I don't cross. Right. And so you you kind of don't allow yourself to go past that barrier to even think about what that might be like. Um, yeah. And Sunrise in chat says because they're both fog your father figures as well. Fogger father figures. Words right. But I would I would contend that that um, Dr. Chakwas is kind of a motherly figure. Yeah. But is there if there's not that like there's not that same kind of your direct commanding officer boundary. Thing going yeah on, yeah right? she's 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 parallel she's not you right. know yeah. right and that that doesn't that doesn't have like psychologically that boundary is there and so i think that just automatically shuts certain parts of your brain off when it comes to mm. like romantic attraction or whatever because you don't you don't you, like as humans we try not to break that's a social pact like that's a huge social no-no in so many different types of situations that most of the time we you know it, it's like a it's like the same side of a magnet repelling itself you know like you're just like nope nope yeah. no it's not well, even I mean, a thing not even gonna think about it not not for everyone i know <laughs> not for everyone but i think for a lot of people that that even even if they're naturally drawn towards that there's this like n- this sense of like i shouldn't be yeah societal no no um right so what's the difference, you know, beyond that, though, beyond the positions difference, what is the difference why it would be OK uh, for anyone in the community to want to romance um, Dr. Chuck was just on the age note on the age note alone? Mm-hmm. Why is it OK for people uh, for Shepard to want to romance Dr. Chuck was, but uh-huh. not Anderson or, or Hackett? And I get like I get it. It's inextricable. You can't take it out of the scenario where Anderson and Hackett are not these mentor type figures. I get right, that. Right. Um, I also think that it's probably more common simply because so much of the player base is uh, heterosexual males. And so they're not going to be looking at somebody like Hackett as a potential love interest so much as Chuck was, Right. Well, I'd venture to guess the same thing, but I don't have the statistics on that. So I could definitely be wrong, but I would, I would venture to guess that the plurality of the player base are heterosexual males. For most, I mean, you look at most video games, especially these types of games, and it's still the majority of players who are heterosexual males. Um, I don't have the specific details for Mass Effect. I bet Mass Effect has less than the average, but I, it's probably still the majority that's my guess. Sure. I could be Fair. wrong though. If, if somebody has the data on that and can prove me wrong, that'd be amazing. Um, but that's a fair just, point, but that's, that's, just that's, a, that's not even accounting for all of the fem chefs who want to romance Chakwas. 
sure <laughs> sure you know yeah that's um, true that's true so so anyway there's a, there's a lot to unpack there um and to many people that i've spoken with they've never even thought about a hack at romance right right um maybe because like this listener suggests you know a ton of people tend to skip through hackett's dialogue and he's that's nothing true. more than the shepherd i need you to do this that's true he doesn't feel as much like a character until later on in the series yeah he's more of just a yeah notification <laughs> So. <laughs> he's like i need you to do this mission and then uh, later in the series you're like oh you're kind of a big deal huh yeah yeah i yeah. can totally get that well hmm, we're gonna let you guys think about this a little bit more while we go do our mid break and we've got a planet card this week so stay tuned for that but we'll be right back message coming in patching it through I am sovereign, and this station is mine. I like the sound of that. All right, here we are in the middle of the show this week. We've already did our patron callouts on the last episode. This week we're going to, or at least this episode, since it's a two-episode week, we're going to read out one of our reviews. We got this in from Digital Urn on Apple Podcasts, who gave us five stars and wrote, Love it, mate. As someone who has spent hours on the Mass Effect wiki. This is the best show for me. I've blazed through the first 40 episodes and I'm still constantly impressed at how deep their research goes. That's all because of that guy right there. Sam's the research guy. I do the production stuff. Um, He's the smart one. Uh, The show is very in-depth and fun and the music of Mass Effect episodes was one of the best episodes of a podcast I've ever listened to. Big ups to both of you for doing the show. Much love. Much love to you, Digital Earn. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate when you guys take the time to leave us a review. We'll read it out on future episodes and even just giving us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify is absolutely super beneficial. It really helps people know that it's a good show and that you know what to listen to it for or why to listen to it and all of that now sam you said you wanted to chime in with something here yeah um i read this review uh before the show and i was uh i was really humbled you know i anytime we ever get a review when someone's you know like uh, specifically like you mentioned about the research because that's kind of my uh wheelhouse uh for the show yeah um in fact he, this, he likes doing it so much i have to tell him to do less that's where <laughs> that's we're at here true. we're like uh, we're like let's do two episodes a week but we can just kind of do the same we'll just divide up the episodes a little bit in different ways whatever and he ends up doing like twice as much research and i'm like that wasn't really the plan but i'm not trying <laughs> to work you to death buddy but i know that you enjoy it and so it's kind of a labor of love too yeah, definitely. Um, it's a passion. Um, and so when I hear from someone that says that they like to uh, read the Mass Effect wiki for fun, and this person is complimenting my research, um, that uh, that's really touching. So I appreciate that. Um, we do see these reviews. It does matter to me a great deal. Uh, as I've said in previous episodes, my day job, I get a lot of negative feedback, uh, not from coworkers, um, just it's just kind of the nature of journalism. Yeah. Uh, so words like this help, help keep me going. Uh, so I hope you know how much it means. Yeah. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. Now you, um, you also have a planet card here. I do. I do. So I was playing, uh, I'm playing, you know, I'm streaming mass effect every Monday or I'm sorry, every Saturday. Um, and I'm playing some side missions, um, outside of the stream. And, and, and when I'm playing outside of the stream, I get a lot of time to read planet cards because although I like reading the lore bits and I like diving into it and taking my time, mm-hmm. not exactly great and compelling content for a stream. So I tend to do these things off stream. Um, but I saw this one and this one stood out to me. It's called Afras. Uh, uh here's the planet cards description. Ophrys, a unique discovery. Ophrys is a, quote, heavenly twin, a planet in a star system that has not one but two worlds of sufficient mass to retain a nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere within the habitable life zone of its parent star. Fossil evidence shows abundant vertebrates and evidence of a sapient terrestrial avian species in its Bronze Age. Interesting. Huh. Sounds like Turians yeah, almost, like the, right? Like an early Turian society. Yeah. Um, however, the only trace of contemporary life on the planet is that of a single celled organism in its seas. All else has suffered from an extinction level event, a series of massive impacts that vaporized vast quantities of water and lofted dust into its atmosphere. Early theories that this event was a collision with a fragmenting asteroid have now been discounted. 
the impact craters were aimed directly at habitation centers. Uh Uh-oh. Whoa. There's some shenanigans going on there. So they got targeted. Yeah. That's what that means. They were targeted by something. Yeah. Now that doesn't necessarily mean reapers. You know, my first thought is reapers. Oh, sure. Yeah. That could be any, I mean, throwing rocks at planets is a viable means of attacking another civilization. Um, And in some ways it's actually easier than creating your own warheads and that kind of thing. Right. And in fact, you know, um, this was probably not reapers because it says that this terrestrial avian species was in its bronze age. Yeah. The reapers famously didn't target species that were not advanced. Right. Also, why would anybody be targeting, uh, uh, you know, people in their, in the bronze and like, they're, they're not going to be a threat to you for many generations. Right. Right. Um, so really interesting. I would have loved to know what happened there and I'm sure that they're leaving it open-ended because maybe they'll come back and elaborate later, but uh, I just saw this planet card when I was exploring the other day and I thought I got to share it. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Well, who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe Afris will, uh, show back up in the future with a little bit more backstory. Well, thanks everybody for your support. We really do appreciate it. Let's move on with the rest of the show. Spit it out, or are you trying to build suspense? You're so dense, sir. Obviously, I do not know as much about human relationships as I thought. All right, so I feel like you might have a little bit more here about this whole potential romance with Hackett thing. Yes, yeah. So, according to this listener, it goes beyond the subtleties and dialogue of how much Hackett seems to care. Uh, Fim Shep apparently fixes her hair or sheepishly uh the the direct wordage uh verbiage that the listener used was coquettishly uh-huh. uh twirls her hair while talking to Hackett on occasion i can't comment on that because again i haven't really I seen fim ship i don't know do you remember that also it would be weird then that Hackett is giving like eyes and looks to male shepherd but fem shepherd is now reacting in a romantic way like why not to both then Right. And I think this listener was saying that the that the way that Hackett even looks at Shepard changes based off of Fem Shep right. or Male Shep. So Hackett's into only Male Shep, but Fem Shep's into Hackett? Is that like there's like a <laughs> No. No, I, I I meant the opposite. Um I meant that Hackett is apparently, you know, giving eyes to only Fem Shep. Oh, but, uh, okay, know, okay. I thought you were saying male yeah. Shep. Okay, I got you. I got you. Uh, that would be hilarious. Uh, I mean, no, I, I've played well, male I mean, Shep, so can I go can either way. That. Like you know, there's there's all sorts of you know hetero gay romance stuff in the game. Like sure. it could go however. So I wasn't going to discount that as a possibility. Um, okay, so he's giving eyes to Fem Shep, and Fem Shep is twirling her hair. Right, reciprocating kinds of uh, flirting. Uh, yeah, kind emotes. Of, right, according to this listener, anyway. Um, and this listener also says that Hackett glances at her boobs. I mean, just if, if a character's eyes happen to move downward, you, you could say that that's a thing. But also people's eyes wander, you know, like and it's hard to tell because oftentimes right. you see like one face and then you see the other face. Right. So it's hard to know. Right. Right. So. So here's here's the uh, here's the exact. <laughs> Here's the exact quote uh, from from the listener. You know, to be fair, uh, you know, the, the glance at at at, at Shepard's boobs uh, is quick and neutral, but still, uh, she fixes her hair before him, uh, and the listener says, "Damn, I laughed at that." And I think it's after Novaria slash the Cerberus fighting base. Um, I'm not sure when exactly that is when they're talking about. Um, but, and again, I can't comment on this, but it's, it's definitely something I'm going to be looking for now in my Fim Shep playthrough. But it might just um, be like people with longer hair constantly have to fix their hair because the hair gets right. in the way or it moves and they're like, oh, okay, fix my hair. I'm going to keep talking. Right. Like I could see, I could see both sides of this. Yeah. And I know, I know male Shep, he like scratches his head or something. He's like, yeah, that's what he does. That's the gesture that male Shep does. Um, I don't remember ever seeing Hackett glance at shepherd's boobs yeah. uh and people look again. different directions when they're thinking while they're talking like i just did right there as i was gesturing with All my right. hand i looked downward had somebody been standing in front of me they might have thought i looked at their boobs excuse me sir are you looking at my chest i'm looking at sam's chest right now my yeah. eyes are up here <laughs> right, right? <laughs> yeah uh, huh. 
Uh, all right. Okay. Okay. What else do we have? Do you have any other evidence here? <laughs> yeah, I see. I see Genesis here in chat says, I also want to go on, on record and say, I am not the listener before my DMS blow up. Right. Genesis is one of the hosts of the two girls, one show, right, right. uh, podcast. Um, so, uh, no, Genesis is not the listener, but I am, <laughs> I'm leaving the name out, uh, so as to not embarrass anyone. Um, but, what is the, you know, we talked a little bit about it before, but like even assuming that Shepard and Hackett want to be in a romance, you know, a romance, uh, romantic relationship together. What's the viability of that even like with Alliance protocol? I mean, they they see each other in person twice. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Lots of intercom time. <laughs> Hey, you need me in the, you need me to go on another mission for you? <laughs> hey, uh, thanks for thanks for uh, piping in here with a new update on our mission, Hackett. But I think I'm going to take this one in my quarters, <laughs> my private quarters. Yeah. There's having a lot of. Can uh, we talk about this one privately, Hackett? I have VidCom. some questions about our mission. Saucy vidcom calls over the extranet. Oh God. Uh, <laughs> what what are you wearing uh armor <laughs> <laughs> 10 millimeters of plate armor that that Hot. stupid fucking visor <laughs> Hot. the delum core overlay visor yeah, yeah. uh don't worry about it <laughs> what are you wearing uh dress blues <laughs> sweet i thought maybe nice <laughs> yeah yeah um so you know what it, i don't know i mean we've been talking about this for a little while what do you think tom would would you say this is a possibility or do you think this is looking too far into things i mean uh, chances are occam's razor this is not a thing right otherwise it would make it more explicit but to play the other side and say well, sometimes people just enjoy flirting without any real intention of anything happening that could be a thing right sometimes there's just you sometimes you just give signals even subconsciously just because you enjoy giving signals and getting signals back and it just makes you feel good. So, yeah. Eh. Yeah. I mean, I personally, I don't think the games writers intended for this to be a thing. Like, I don't think that they were even flirting. Uh, sure. I could be wrong. Right. Again, I haven't gotten to this point uh, in the, in the story with Fimship where, where she's talking to uh, Hackett in person or even over VidCom that much. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think it was intended, but I, you know, I think this could just be a thing that like, if you want it to be a thing, you can make it a thing. Maybe you're looking into it a lot. Um, but I, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll leave it there. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's part of the fun of these games is just like the whole romance aspect, but you know, I didn't expect that we'd be, uh, talking about romances yet in the series but and well, i didn't expect especially to be starting with hackett you know i mean there's a lot of other characters that get a lot of uh a lot of romance time and much more popular when it comes to that but oh god yeah <laughs> and you know on the note of there being now three hackett episodes i think going forward you know talking about those characters with the romances uh there are going to be romances or c characters who we cover who are actually romanceable in the game and it could be a good idea to save talking about that aspect of their development for a smaller bonus episode on top of the normal lore we actually cover. So if we're giving a character one episode of straight lore, mm -hmm. have a bonus episode just about their romance um, where we can go into it, not too much in depth, not exhaustive or anything like that. Uh, if anyone wants an exhaustive, um, uh, you know, like really comprehensive type of coverage on the romance again i'd refer them over to the two girls one ship podcast yeah, there's a whole other show for that but it's it is a key component of the games it's one of the things that attracts a lot of people to the games is that that's part of role playing and character it's part of life and being able to do that with your character is would make sense yeah yeah and you know just some housekeeping i mentioned several weeks ago that we would intersperse these character episodes with topical ones uh, and I'm thinking we might start doing that next week. Okay. Uh, we were, we've been doing these character episodes and I don't want to burn us out on too many profile features back to back to back. And, um, so where are we I'm going? Thinking, I'm thinking next week, we're going to go somewhere a little bit more mechanical, a little bit more scientific. Uh, we're going to be talking about 
not just the Alliance Navy's command structure and the different fleets. There's eight different fleets. Uh, but more importantly, we're going to be talking about its crown jewel, the SSV Normandy. That sounds awesome. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Um, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Sam, you have anything you want to share before we head out? Yeah, I mentioned on the last episode that I revitalized my stream with some new themes, uh, new Mass Effect space, spacey themes, mm-hmm. new sub badges, and most importantly, the new awesome Mass Effect inspired music written by the one and only Pipe Man, uh, who was on the Music of Mass Effect episode. But I also uh, started a new Dragon Age playthrough, nice. my first playthrough of Dragon Age ever. Uh, and yeah, I'm not sure if you saw this, but I just posted to like Twitter about it before my stream that day. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to start my new, my first Dragon Age playthrough in about an hour, you know, any advice and holy shit, did that blow up? <laughs> that was like, I think the, uh, the cinematic, uh, I don't know if he was a cinematic designer or director for Dragon Age, mm-hmm. but he worked on the cinema cinematography for Dragon Age and Mass Effect. He commented on that. Oh, wow. And he also was a cinematic director for Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Oh, very cool. Um, yeah. So I might reach out to him and say, hey, you know, we've got some <laughs> questions if you'd like to talk with us. Um, but yeah, that was fun. No, but it blew up. And then like during my stream that day, holy crap, like <laughs> there's so many people that showed up. So mm-hmm. I know that there's the, my, my point is I know there's a lot of crossover and the fandom between Mass Effect and Dragon Age. So if you'd like to see a Dragon Age stream, I am streaming that on Thursdays. And I'm continuing my Sassy Shepherd Saturdays uh, and Miscellaneous Mondays is a whole slew of fun miscellaneous games that I'm playing. And uh, if you'd like to watch any of that, you can catch me at in seven, the legend on Twitch, uh, same handle on Twitter. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Go check that stuff out. And uh, my channel is the robots radio channel on Twitch and YouTube and Facebook. It's where we stream these live on Monday nights. So come join us usually around 1030 PM Eastern. And uh, I also do some other streams around, you know, whenever I get a chance during the week, playing some games, hanging out, been writing music, been doing a whole music thing, released some uh, some lo-fi beats up on Bandcamp under Robots Radio. I think if you search it, it probably comes up at this point, Um, you know, tinkering with some stuff. I'm also trying to put together some uh, some shoegaze dream pop style, like rock music, like alternative rock music, um, which totally goes back to my roots and has me playing with a bunch of guitar like pedals and stuff again which is super fun but uh yeah come hang out with us we in both of our streams we'd love to have you otherwise you can check out all the other shows at robotsradio.net and um you know i do a bunch of shows about a bunch of other lore things so go check that out and there's all sorts of other shows on the network so go check those out as well that's what we got for this week we'll see you guys again next time thanks for being here everybody stay safe out there later Thanks for tuning in to the Mass Effect Lorecast. We'd love to hear your opinion and thoughts on the lore of Mass Effect. Reach out to us on Twitter at Mass Effect Cast or check out the Robots Radio Discord. Also, you can send us an email at Mass Effect Lorecast at gmail.com.